Hello my country people, welcome back to Spice Channel TV. The EFCC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, has arrested the former Taraba State Governor, Darikus Ishaku, over allegations of 27 billion fraud. And top sources within the commission confirmed that the former governor was arrested on Friday and was still in the anti-draft agency's detention as of Friday evening. One of the sources revealed that at least 15 count charges have been filed against Ishaku and he would be arraigned in court soon as evidence against him had been compiled. Ishaku is a member of the People's Democratic Party and served as the governor of Taraba State from May 2015 to May 2023. And in May 2021, the anti-draft agency also arrested three officials who served under his government for allegedly involved in a 21 billion era scam. It was learned that the state officials were a permanent secretary, the other was a director of finance and account, and a cashier in the Ministry of Local Government and Chief Tenancy Title Affairs. It was, it was gathered further that the alleged stolen public funds under a Shaco government were redrawn from the state account through checks in the trenches of at least 10 million era each. And guys, the EFCC have arrested the former Taraba State governor and ex-governor of Taraba State for uh, the alleged 27 billion era fraud whereas they are still looking at Yahya Bello. I guess they are chasing after him because he's a PDP member. The thing is, I believe in Nigeria we practice selective justice. Kudos to the FCC for doing their job. How come they could easily arrest the former Taraba state governor who was a PDP governor? But Yahaya Bello and APC governor have not been arrested here today. I mean, who are they trying to deceive? Recently, the media office of the Kogi state former governor, Yahaya Bello, accused EFCC of executing a hatchet job against Yahaya Bello for undisclosed interests, where they criticized the EFCC's recent actions and press statements, tagging them as biased claiming that they were driven by personal and political motives rather than a genuine fight against corruption, where they described the anti-draft agency's statement as an embarrassment to itself because the EFCC had declared Yahya Bello wanted. And he was widely reported by the media to have voluntarily appeared at the premises of the EFCC, although he was later allowed to leave the premises. And, and after he left, I think four hours after he left, the ESCC started chasing after him. They went to arrest him after he left their office that day. Imagine what they are doing in Nigeria. So this group called to the ESCC that if, if the ESCC was truly interested in, in prosecution, that why is it that they are always chasing after him? That would the agency not have taken him in on that day? That, in fact, they are doing this deliberately where they called on a uh, President Bola Tinibu to investigate this ongoing face-off between Bello and the ESCC, stressing that the fight against corruption should not be selective, adding that Nigeria belongs to all Nigerians. Yes, Nigeria belongs to all Nigerians, but then it seems that Nigeria belongs to some certain Nigerians in this country. Some certain persons are like the owners of this country, where they seem to be untouchable, unshakable, unmovable. Yes, we know them. They know themselves. But the thing is, who, there is nobody to hold the EFCC accountable. Even the president that is, out, that is in fact, the commander-in-chief of armed forces, the president ought to come and say the EFCC are not doing their job. Someone that, fought to, that swore to fight corruption. Nobody, there is no entity, there is no commission that is holding EFCC, holding them accountable for their actions, even the House of Representatives, the House of Reps that, that ought to call the EFCC or even the Senate, call the EFCC to order, telling them that what they are doing is not fair. Call them to order and hold them accountable, hold them responsible for their actions. 
Because that EFCC boss, Ulukayo Day, that swore that if he did not get hold of Yahya Belo, he, he will come down from his duties, he will step down, he will this, he will that. How far? How far has he gone? Have the Senate called him and said, what about your pursuit on Yahya Belo? How far have you gone? Why have they not, in fact, why is, the, why is it that no arrests have been made? The House of Reps have not called uh, Yahya Belo to come and answer for his crimes. But they are calling Bob Risky and the uh, very dark man to come. They've summoned them. They have summoned them that they should appear before them. But Yahya Belo is an exception. So this particular Taraba former governor that they've arrested, it's good and fine, oh. That the EFCC in some way are still doing their jobs. But it seems that it's more like a targeted, uh, you know, uh, how would I put, call it? They, they, they tend to fight corruption in a selective way. They target the people that they are going to face. You see? So even Ganduji. We've not even talked about Ganduji. Ganduji that we saw evidence clear. Evidence were there, video recordings, voice recordings were present to show Ganduji's alleged, you know, uh, misappropriation of funds while he was a former Kano governor. But yet, have the EFCC, all the charges against him, the courts, they keep on arraigning the case. They keep on arraigning the case, adjoining the case, I beg your pardon. Yahya Bello uh, Ganduji, because they are APC chieftains, so they are now untouchable. Well, unfortunately for this uh, former Taraba governor, he's a PDP chieftain, so he would be called in for questioning at least. So you see what's happening in Nigeria? It's a selective fight of corruption. The ESCC claim they fight corruption, but they know the people that they are targeting. They go after some set of people, while some other set of people, they turn their eyes away. When it comes to you know, going around harassing small, small boys, young, young guys, because they see them with luxurious cars and all, they are quick to do that. But the politicians in our country that they ought to face, politicians that are stealing huge amount of money, and you see this case of corruption, it did not start today, it has been in our system for long. Right after we gain our independence, right after we left the military regime, this corruption has been going on. But now the politicians seem to be untouchable because no, there is no entity, there is no body to hold them accountable for their actions. Our judicial system is compromised. They can't do anything. Their hearts are tied because they've, they've been bought over by the ruling party. If it were to be out of the country, in places like the US, will all these things be happening? No. But Nigeria, everything is possible. Guys, I'm dropping you. Kindly share your thoughts on this in the comments section. Thank you.